<laughs> I think it might need tuning to. Huh? Not yet. Yeah, really well. We've, I think we've turned a corner. Uh, we've, we're right at the point now where uh, Mike's edited and chopped together the, the album contenders uh, that we kind of do some basic overdubs on. Then we'll all um, make a decision which of those ideas are going to make the, the record. We've probably got too many ideas for the record. Since Mr. Rothery's been back with us, we've, um, we've actually been working on some of our favourite ideas. And um, it's been really good. The last couple of weeks, we've actually come in, uh, listened to some of the jams, put some of the various jams together. Um, Steve H has been matching up some of the, his lyrics, vocals, with some of the jam ideas. And um, so I think there's probably five or six tracks that we're, we're kind of not putting under a microscope, but, but seeing uh, what the potential is with them. It's, and it's going, it's going very well. So we're, the plan is to ca carry on doing that. And then uh, we're still coming in and we're still jamming occasionally. Just to, um, you know, Mike might say to us, I'd like you to jam around one section and see if we can get a, a, a different version of it or see where it goes. So it's still quite free. <laughs> um, so that's, that's the plan, and we're going to carry on till I think, mid to end of June, like that. And then um, f from there, hopefully, we're, we're booked into uh, Real World Studios, and we'll go down there and uh, have a bloody good time. <laughs> no, I mean, we'll work. We'll work hard. <laughs> we have made a shortlist, kind of long shortlist, but a shortlist of songs or you know sections of music we've turned them into songs and we're at a stage now where we're just starting to put the overdubs on and and turn them into a bit more uh, slightly more polished pieces of music it's, it's always the same with making a record where you just feel like nothing's really happening for the longest time and then uh, it kind of comes together but that's mainly down to mike's hard work nothing that any of the rest of us do we're all just sort of oblivious. I mean, we are a six piece really. You know, I can't, I can't stress that enough. Mike brings so much to the table. We'd never get it together without Mike. You know, it would just, we'd, we'd still be scratching our heads wondering what to do. We're at that stage now where um, I think we're about two minutes after the planet exploded. Um, I've often likened making a record to a planet exploding backwards. So you have months and months and months of absolutely nothing. Then moments before the end, you start seeing dust coming towards you and coalescing. And then in the last, what seems like a microsecond, it just goes, shoo, and there it is. And I think we're about two minutes out of the backward explosion. So we're at a point now where you can actually start to get a feeling of what it's going to be like. It's mad the way we work, really. You know, it's quite a surprise sometimes because there'll be two ideas in the same song and you forget, but at the, at the end of the process, you forget that one of the ideas was from six months ago and the other idea was from seven years ago or something, or five years ago, and it's just been waiting for its t chance to shine. The guys, um you know, when they're not in here, they're at home and they're working on stuff at home because most of the guys have got their own sort of home studios. And it's nice because they're coming in and they're listening to them talking about stuff. They're, they all seem genuinely quite excited and really positive about, about the way things are going. And also because nothing's kind of in concrete, so H might really, you know, match a lyric up with a piece of music we're doing and suddenly that piece of music might change or get put into another track, which kind of shatters poor Steve, you know, he's, he's beamed in and he's thought, this lyric works great here. Suddenly it might all change for him. Um, but he's, he's been incredibly flexible with that so far. <laughs> um, but that's a, that's a tough, tough job he's got there. So, um, 
But no, everybody's... The main thing, everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. We're enjoying each other's company, we're enjoying playing together. And for me, that's, that's what it's about, really. So um, all, all healthy and all good. But watch this space, you know, could go horribly wrong any minute. <laughs>
pop or rock bands or dub bands or any form of contemporary music, you can count the minor chords on one hand, maybe apart from Radiohead. But, but you know, and us, because we're, we're all about the minor chords. Um, anyone proposes a major chord, there's a lot of controversy in the room. There's a few kind of more standalone songs. Um, maybe a bit more like some of the songs on um, Sounds That Can't Be Made, where they're not necessarily episodic like New Kings was, for example. Uh, there's one or two songs that are becoming like that, you know. One or two songs that we thought were probably going to be quite short um, have actually got longer and longer and then, oh, this, this bit's really good. And sometimes that's, you know, that helps the lyrics because there's a lot of lyrics and it's like, well, all these lyrics are really, really good, so it'd be a shame not to use some of them somewhere. It's almost like a second home to us, really. Uh, and it's one of the best studios in the world and, and the most unique studio that I've ever been in. Uh, and apart from the intercity trains waking you up at five o'clock in the morning, it's a, it's a pretty much a perfect place to work. Uh, the idea of, of Real World is uh, just to go down there and, and be, be a band without uh, any of the distractions that we might find when we're in here. Um, because we all travel in every day to this to the racket club here and um, you know we're usually home probably by four or five o'clock but uh, at real world we we go in you know we have breakfast in the studio all morning break for lunch then back in the studio all, all afternoon break for dinner and then back in the studio again for the whole for an evening session and um, so it's great it's just it's as the band, being a real band, for, for 24 hours a day. I mean, we're, we're going to try and get the bulk of the work done here, but it's great to have a place like Real World. It kind of just, it, um, it helps to re reaffirm the fact that we're on the right, that we're on the right page. Also gives us a whole week of just thinking everybody immersed on the album. Because, you know, we sort of, we, we, we drive back and forth from our studios, so it's not the same. A real world is really like having, a week in real world is much more like having three or four weeks in, 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 in another studio because you're just there and we are talking about it from breakfast till the time you go to bed, you know. And at any point you can have an idea and just go with it. Or if you know, it, it allows Mike to be able to play the stuff on, all of their systems, they've got about three or four different sort of types of speaker systems and things and so just, yeah, it does sound good. Yeah, it sounds, you know, if it sounds, if it sounds better than it sounds in our studio, then, then that's good. Our studio is, um, we're used to it. Mike's very used to the way that that room sounds, but, um, you know, it's just nice to go somewhere else and, oh yeah, it is, it is all working. Everything's working. So that's something to focus on as well something to look forward to. Um, you know, when you get to the point where you've booked a bit of time in a proper recording studio, you, kn you know you're nearly there. Well, the, the tour um, was kind of take the decision was taken out of our hands, really. The promoters uh, couldn't take the risks. Um, and with Port Zealand, we couldn't take the financial risk, really. It would have... Um, bankrupted the, the band, which obviously no one wants. And it's such a shame because Port Zealand is such an amazing a, a, occasion for everyone, you know, for the audience, for the band, you know, for my family. It, they, it's, it's the ultimate uh, experience. So, but it's still gonna happen, it just happens a year later. You've just got two years of conventions to enjoy. And uh, of course, you know, going to new places like this, this the Stockholm weekends, could be really, really fun and really different. So it's still going to be a very special uh, year next year. And of course, we've still got the UK tour in November. And I think for us anyway, well for me, it's really important to, to actually get, get out of this studio and get in front of an audience because one, it kind of makes you realise 
while you're doing it and having a reaction, it just completely recharges your batteries and gives you, gives you extra energy. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to. I can't imagine what the first gig's going to be like. Um, I think we'll probably be all quite nervous, but I, I think they're going to be... I just think they're going to be amazing. I think it's going to be a, a, a really nice, raucous occasion, I hope. Because, what well, I mean, what I'm look, I mean, we've all missed being in front of an audience massively, massively. I don't think, uh, unless you've, unless you do it, I don't think you could really understand what it means. It means so much to us, and and uh, we know it means so much to our fans as well. So, I just think the fact that people can have a little bit, you know get back to a little bit of the, 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 the life they had before yeah. and, um, and just to see the fans out there. Every, I think they're gonna, you know, everyone's going to want a bit of a party, I think. I think it's going to be a, a religious experience. Um, I, I think just walking onto a stage in front of our crowd and standing there is going to be a, a, a huge spiritual experience because I know the people are going to be celebrating the fact that they're there and that we're there and that we're back together. And I don't think we'd have to play any music really. We, we, <laughs> we, could just, we could just stand there and let everybody go nuts for half an hour, you know, and <laughs> drink tea or something. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. There are places you can go in the places we can go in the world and we can anticipate the most amazing vibe um, because we can remember it happening before um, and you know I've done, done we've done shows together in Montreal and and in Paris where the warmth before you even play a note is is you could cut it cut it up and serve it in slices you know um but i i suspect that's going to happen everywhere this time so i'm really I'm, I'm, you, and if that wasn't true i would still be looking forward to it with every blinking fiber in my body but as it is i think it's going to be incredible I know, that's going to be a, a, a blast from the past. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time we played Hammersmith Odeon, but, but I mean, we've done so many gigs there over the years. And it is one of my favourite venues for the, the drum sound in Hammy Ham, Ham, Ham Odeon is um, the acoustic drum sound in there is really nice, which usually, you know, once the kit's through the PA, it's just an amplification of that, hopefully. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But, yeah, we've done so many gigs there over the years. Uh, so lots of very fond memories. Some of the first gigs I did with Marillion were at Hammersmith. Um, yeah, really, really looking forward to it. But, yeah, the, the majority of the tour, it's, I called it, on the last tour, we, we did a lot of, the same venues, didn't we? Concert halls. I called it the posh tour, you know, because <laughs> we had in-house catering, which is very posh, and people were, the majority of the gigs were seated. Um, they all had quite a classical vibe to it, and, and the girls on board as well, so, um, but some really nice venues, really nice venues. Yeah, it's just, it's been such a, um, a terrible year and a half for so many people and uh, the end is in sight and when we do walk on that stage in November every night is going to be a real celebration. It's a celebration of the fact that we're all still here but also of the music and, and people's faith uh, in the band and yeah, it's going to be quite emotional. Thanks for watching Marillion's official YouTube channel. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification thingamajig so you're the first to know when we upload new content. Mm -hmm.